So what do you think of chemists? <laughs> well, I think we're nothing more than cooks. And just like you, we need a recipe. For example, if you want to make nanoparticles, mix two chemical ingredients, hafnium chloride powder and benzyl alcohol, heat the mixture in an oven to 220 degrees Celsius, and then wait. 72 hours, and I really hate waiting. So one night, I came home frustrated and tired, so I bought some prepared meal in the supermarket. And I read the instructions. 30 minutes in a preheated oven, or three minutes in the microwave. Of course, why not microwave my chemical reaction to speed it up? So the next morning, I mixed the chemicals, put them in the microwave, and after only one minute, the microwave exploded. That was not my best idea, and we had to buy a new microwave, chemical one this time. This one is explosion-free. So we ran the experiment again, and then we observed that the reaction was completed in only three hours, which is a pretty huge difference compared to its normal oven. And if you would apply this microwave concept to the chemical industry, now this could lead to an enormous reduction in time, energy input, and CO2 emission. Now, that's good for me, the industry, and the environment. OK, but how does this microwave thingy work? Do you remember the first time you put a frozen lasagna in a normal oven? After a while, you saw that a tasty crust was being formed. You started smelling the lasagna. Hmm? So you took it out, you put your fork in it, and it was still stone cold in the middle. An oven provides heat from the outside, so the middle is cold unless you wait a very long time. And this enables you to serve such delicious crust. But, chemically speaking, crust is just burnt food. <laughs> and we don't want to burn chemicals. So that's where the microwaves come into play. Microwaves are electromagnetic radiation, but they just act like real waves. And if a microwave passes through material, the molecules of that material will start bouncing around on that wave, and this generates heat inside your material. So in the microwave, it's hot in the middle, but not on the edges. And that's why a microwave heats much faster, and even better. No crust is being formed, so we don't burn chemicals. And we only produce what we desire, which was these particles. So in the microwave, we can make these particles faster, but also smaller. And with small, I really mean extremely tiny. They're only a few nanometers big. That's a billionth of a meter. And you say, yeah, good job, man. OK, awesome. But what are we going to do with them? Well, we could put them in other materials. And this may seem a bit silly to you. But just, you know, like you add raisins to bread to improve the flavor, we as chemists add particles to other materials to improve their quality. And in my research, I added particles to superconductors. Now, not everybody knows what a superconductor is, so let's do a little thought experiment to gain a bit of feeling for that. Imagine yourself at the beginning of this street. Now, I would like you to imagine running through all these people as fast as you can to the other end of the street. Now, go. Now you're hitting people, getting punched in the stomach, yeah? You experience resistance. And that's the exact same that happens to electricity when you want it to flow through a normal conductor, like copper. So we could say, this is a normal conductor. Then what's a superconductor? This. A superconductor carries the electricity without resistance. So without energy losses. So that's an amazing material. And then here I come with my particles. I put them in the superconductor so we increase the quality of the superconductor so that we can use it in applications. And there are applications that save or improve your life, like an MRI scanner at the hospital. And there are green applications where the superconductor can save or even harvest energy. And for example, with superconductors, we can make more powerful windmills and so replacing fossil fuels. Now, this can solve our energy problem in a sustainable way. And that's all because I've added these little particles. So in conclusion, 
with a microwave, we can make nanoparticles smaller and faster. And because it's faster, we are saving energy at that point. But the second point is that we can put the particles in superconductors, and these superconductors can be used in green, sustainable applications. Now, the next time you put something in the microwave, you might miss the crust, but it's smaller, better, faster, and greener. Thank you. Smaller, better, faster.